Yeah, and that's what's so crazy about Gobekli Tepe being the oldest thing we know that humans made because there are elements of it that we would struggle to do today. These pillars are many tons from what I understand, and they're all in alignment in this circular fashion with two in the middle. There's a ritualistic kind of nature to it or a theme that it looks like it's for something uh, somewhat esoteric. And that's what's so odd because you would think that the first thing we could find that man has made would be pretty rudimentary or have a lot of imperfections in it. So to me, that just says, well, this is the oldest thing we can find, but civilization seems to have really been rocking at that point to have made something of this nature. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, the fact that Gebekli Tepe is currently the kind of oldest in that kind of region around Shanlurfa, that area where most of the sites uh, are being investigated, is it, it kind of doesn't make sense. It, it appears like it's come out of nowhere. It, it seems like it's just suddenly there was this giant innovation and artistic style and stone carving technology. But you can trace it back. You can trace elements of that back to other sites. You know, you can, you know, even at Cortic Tepe up near the Tigris, which is um, a, at least a thousand years older, maybe two, one and a half thousand years older than Quebecli Tepe. They found these kind of stones that you can hold in your hand. And they had 3D relief carvings of abstract artistic figures on them. And and that's one of the things we find at Gebekli Tepe starting in um, 11,600 years ago. And so this was at least a thousand years older than that. But they're smaller, but they show that they were doing that. You go back to some of the Paleolithic era caves and carvings going back 30 40 thousand years you do find 3d reliefs carved on rock walls and in caves and in shelters very occasionally like france and parts of europe and so you, there is an element of this before gobekli tepe so um but suddenly to decide to build you know, just if we just take Gebekli Tepe as, as an example, there's, although only a small amount's been excavated, there's possibly 20 of these stone circle constructions with these giant T pillars. Virtually every T pillar, some of them are 18 feet tall, are carved into this beautiful shape of this huge T with, with these 3D relief carvings on them, some in high relief, like beautiful 3D carving with all these symbols. And it almost looks like a language, like a whole kind of system they had in place before they did it to come up with this. And and the other thing that baffles me as well is it's really abstract, like the art. It's not like they're not just carving and creating art from what they see. They're kind of going into these abstract forms, which are continuous. And they, and they go to all the other sites. They're, they're using the same types of T-pillars, the same kind of relief carvings, the same symbols throughout the region over a nearly 2,000-year period. And so it, it, it's really bizarre when you, when you actually start really looking at some of the kind of carvings they've got there. And it makes you wonder, you know, what triggered that? You know, what could trigger that kind of, you know, amazing abstract artistic style just to come and just, just to be so prevalent in this area mm -hmm. yeah great points and i've seen some estimates that some of those t pillars are up to 50 tons and you never know if what you read is accurate but even if it's half that i still struggle to understand how they were cut and placed and let's get into some of the new discoveries because i think this audience is pretty well familiar with the basics of gobekli tepe but just like we found with the Easter Island statues, there were bodies underneath the heads. And just like it seems to be under Stonehenge, there's a lot more structure beneath it. And even when they were excavating Gobekli Tepe, to my understanding, they said, hey, look, we're just getting started. This is only 5% perhaps excavated. And it's an ongoing process. But in the time since we last talked, they have announced some pretty interesting things and they made it into your new book. What are the new discoveries that have been announced that are from Gobekli Tepe and Karahan Tepe, the two that make it into your new book. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, well, very recently, um, uh, literally a few weeks, you know, just a short while ago, like the end of uh, September 2023, um, they announced some new discoveries. Mainly it was at Karahan Tepe. They found a new statue, which is seven and a half feet tall. So that's 2.3 meters. It, it was found broken in three parts and it had 
it was like a seated human figure holding his phallus, which was you know sticking out quite far. But also he had his ribs showing, he had a little square kind of relief on his uh, chest, arms going down the side. He had what appears to be a line going a lot below, along the edge of his face, between his ear and his nose, which looked like a beard line, and also what looked like a beard coming down from his uh, lower part of his face. And and he had this cool haircut. He had like almost like shaved bits down the side. And it going around, it almost looked like a helmet. And uh, the images are, are really compelling. And and he's, the fact is, he's seven and a half feet tall. Now this w- this now makes it not only one of the largest, but definitely the oldest ever human statue carved anywhere on Earth. In 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 this kind of you know in this kind of three D style you know a, a freestanding statue. So that is pretty amazing. The earlier earliest one before that was Earth a Man. Or what was called the Balikligal statue, and that dates to around eight and a half thousand BC. Whereas this is nine and a half thousand BC, so it's a thousand years older at least. And Urfa Man wasn't as detailed. It was found in the middle of Channel Urfa at a site called Yemen Hali, and it was found recumbent, a bit like part of this was as well, you know, lying on the ground. And that one was kind of bald with obsidian eyes and much simpler features. Now both of them, though. Both of them are both touching their phallus. The phallus is clearly shown in the new one, especially. But also, they have a V-neck motif, you know, like a, almost like Star Trek. And this, this we find on quite a few of the symbols, and we're realizing that was an important symbol, an important style that they were doing back there. So you have this seven and a half foot statue. That's one of the discoveries at Karahan Tepe. Only one. There's a second statue they found right next to it, which is probably three, two or three feet tall, and it's this. It's basically a vulture it looks like a vulture sitting there you know carved wings beak it's still kind of mostly intact they also found a polished stone plate a couple of feet wide and this is all part of a new enclosure which they've uncovered on the top of the hill at Karahan Tepe. And, and, and again, like Gebekli, only 5% even now has been uncovered. And this new enclosure had like a whole stone, giant T pillars, broken though, but they were in the middle. And it could, it could be one of the largest enclosures they're going to find there. Um, and so this was absolutely amazing. We even worked at all the alignments with Andrew Collins, who I've been working with and JJ Ainsworth over the last few years. Um, it fits in with Andrew's research that it's a kind of a line to Cygnus uh, and Deneb and the Milky Way Dark Rift and all this kind of stuff. So that was just at Karahan Tepe. Um, I mean, there's many other discoveries that I, I could talk about. Earlier this year in May, myself and JJ noted um, some carvings on some of the upright pillars in the main enclosure at Karahan Tepe, these carvings that no one had recorded before. We happened to catch them when the light was at a certain angle and you could actually see them. Um, so we were quite pleased about that. And obviously the winter solstice discovery we found in December, 2021, but the brand new discovery at Gebekli Tepe, I'll just quickly describe this. Um, they found this life-size boar statue, like 3d statue. And it's amazing. It looks mm-hmm. so cool. And, and that was found in enclosure D, the main enclosure next to the whole stone there, which is f- towards the North Northwest. And, that was found to have paint like red, white, and black pigment on it. Um, so that now they're realizing, oh, these statues all could have been painted. Um, so that gives a whole other complexion to the site. Um, they also, whilst they were uncovering that area, uh, they also discovered like a slab like below it, like a thin megalith, almost like a tea pillar fallen over and used as a kind of seat. And on the edge of that, was these beautiful um, serpents and a, an H symbol and a little serpent head on it as well. And, not, and further round to one side of it, to the right of this, they what they uncovered was another giant hold stone, like a porthole stone, like heading again to the north. And But this was like a fallen T-pillar on its edge. So it was like kind of this, you know, but on its edge, rather than upright, it had fallen like directly to the one side. 
and had a hole carved in it going to the north again. So, so these are just the, the discoveries they've announced. Now, there's lots of other little things coming out. There's lots of little artifacts that have been found at Carahan Tab, but they've not ended up in the museum because that's currently closed because of the flooding that happened this year. But yes, yeah, so this is just the tip of the iceberg because there's more discoveries at sites like Saybirch. We've found things at sites like Ayan Lahoyak, another one of the sites. Even, you know, we've found various things there's discoveries um being made on the ground at sites that haven't even begun to be excavated yet so this is re this is really the time of discovery this is like going into egypt in the 17 1800s it's like going in the jungles of the maya um in the 17 1800s this is like the time when people are now discovering people are now uncovering these sites so it's an exciting time uh, for sure yeah, that's a really great summary. It's very exciting. These sites are all over. Some of them I haven't even heard of. It's hard to keep up. It wasn't so hard to keep up five years ago. There was only a handful of places and mysterious things people were looking at. But now there might be 40 sites in this region. Let's go back to that statue because now we have this statue that is the oldest we know of and it's seven feet, six inches. And the Urfa Man statue is Five feet, some odd inches, very accurate human height. Well, you are the guy who has written about giants. Do you think this seven foot, six inch statue is intentionally that height? I mean, that qualifies it as a giant statue. Yeah, it does. I, I mean, I love it. I mean, it's made my day. <laughs> and, and Jim's, it were like, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, proof, proof of at least stone giants. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's compelling because it's like you know you get all this you know one of the things that Andrew and I and JJ and others have, have noted. If you start looking into all the myths of the Anunnaki and the Nephilim, they're all from this kind of region. Um, and that and there are legends of giants, you know, creating these sites. This is this is these are the stories that kind of biblical kind of book of enoch kind of things and so are we seeing you know someone actual size because if earth a man or a biblical statue was actual size like he was five foot nine or you know 1.8 meters then you know perhaps you know it's a little clue towards that now no skeletons are being found to back it up although we know um human remains have been found at some of the sites this year they haven't announced that yet we actually saw them at one of the sites being excavated we were very lucky to see that and uh so we know human remains are being found but they don't really um publish too much about that um but yeah, so who knows if, if this is a seven foot six uh, realistic, you know, statue of someone at the site, maybe one of the builders, one of the astronomer priests, whatever you want to call them, then that would be pretty amazing. Yeah, it would. And no doubt these statues and sites are interesting, but sometimes I think that we romanticize the past or we put a lot on this stuff. and. Sometimes I wonder if it really was a little more mundane, like people just being people as we are today. Sometimes you'll read conventional accounts and they'll say, well, look at this. It shows that man's consciousness was evolving and they were wrestling with their acknowledgement. And it's like, you don't really know what's going on in man's mind. I tend to think that man's mind has been somewhat the same going back all this time. What do I know though? But we have these two statues where guys are holding their phallus and i in your book there are some really great images that kind of show what would this site look like if there were people around and there's one in particular where there's a guy sitting in between the t pillars and it almost looks like they're dividers of some type and you could look at the center as like a center stage and you got these guys holding their phallus i'm thinking maybe this was like some ancient strip club or nudie booth or uh brothel or something boys will be boys you know and we think that it's like some magical place i'm just like maybe it's maybe it's not maybe it's a just another smut den from a man's history and that could explain why it was intentionally buried if some puritanical authority figure was like we gotta get that out of here now i know there's a lot of details i'm kind of glossing over to make that that guess but i think about today's world if it got wiped away uh, and then years later, people were examining our ruins. They might find some footprints in the mud and say, wow, look at those ancient people, you know, us being the ancient people. They walked around 
with sacred geometry on the bottoms of the soles of their shoes. They must have been so enlightened. And it's like, no, nobody knows what that is. They just bought some shoes. And so I think sometimes that can happen. What are your thoughts on the prospect that maybe it isn't so special or maybe it's a little more explainable by uh, man's nature? <laughs> and, and maybe for their world, it really was just a, a mundane place of sorts. 